Hey folks, I wanted to make a tutorial video because I have noticed that a lot of people are using my app um, to teach remotely now, which is awesome. That's totally the reason I designed it. Um, basically what this video is going to show is how to use your app, um, how to use the app with your FaceTime camera and an overhead camera, like a DSLR. Um, let me turn on this light here. There we go. Um, so you can show your hands as well as um, your keyboard, as well as your face and Cordy while you're working with your students. Now I had already shot this um, and for whatever reason, the audio didn't record it, so didn't get recorded. So this is a voiceover. So just, you know, bear in mind that's what's going on. So I don't know exactly what I said in the original. I just know I got everything working. This is a proof of concept. This is a proof that the technology works and that you can use it. Um, do it at your own risk. I have no idea how well it's gonna work in the field. I just know that I got it to work. Okay, with that said, uh, I'm gonna fast forward to where this actually starts. There's a couple pieces of software that you actually need to have. Okay, here we go. All right, so I'm gonna just press play here and then um, we're gonna watch along and I'm gonna comment about what's actually happening um, as best as I can. So it's the closest to the original instructions that I gave. All right, here we go. So the first thing you're going to need is OBS. Uh, let's see, where do I open that? Somewhere in here I start opening up uh, that software. Okay, you're going to need OBS, so download that from the site. Um, once it's open, it's going to open to a blank setup like this. This is the blank setup. You're going to need you're going to need to add a video source in the form of your FaceTime camera. So select video capture device, give it a name like FaceTime cam, and then choose the device in the pop-up FaceTime cam like that. And now you've got it in there. Thumbs up. All right, so you know, resize it. Everything you see in that little window is going to be what shows up in the final stream. Okay, so do it again. If you have a DSLR camera, you're gonna use the feed from that. Pick your device. In my case, I have a uh, Blackmagic mini recorder. And this basically gets video from the uh, DSLR into the computer. Okay, so that's what's going on there. You can see I've got the feed from that side camera. Right there, position it, resize it, get it wherever you want it in your uh, final video feed. Okay, once that's in place, you're good to go. Imagine that you had that camera over your hands on a tripod or something so that students could see your hands. There's no means of cropping these, which is kind of annoying, um, at least as far as I could figure out. Um, anyway, that's not that big a deal. The next thing you're going to need to do is open up Cordy, so that way you can show the keys if you're using a MIDI controller uh, or using, um, uh, yeah, if you're using a MIDI controller to show your hands and show the notes and the chord names and stuff. Uh, unfortunately, like it didn't capture any of the audio because it was helpful to show when that stuff actually showed up. So once you have Cordy open, you're going to add another source, which is a video, uh, window capture device, and you're going to capture the Cordy window. Okay, so just click OK, go like that. Now you can position it the same way you positioned all of your other sources. Like that, um, shrink accordingly. You know, if you want your hands to be the big thing, make them the big thing. Okay, once you've done that, the next thing to do is the complicated part. I believe that's what comes next. You're gonna set up a siphon inject stream like this. So you click on the plus button, choose siphon client. Uh, you can leave it the name that it is, click okay. And now what you're gonna do is click launch siphon inject. That's gonna open this window right here. You're going to choose OBS as your inject target. Then you're going to check that inject uh, checkbox, and then you're going to choose OBS from the application list like that. So launch Siphon Inject first, choose it, choose OBS in the Siphon Inject window, click the Inject button, then click the uh, Inject toggle box, and then choose OBS from the application combo box. Click OK, then open it again, and choose from your source OBS Injected Siphon. And now click OK. There's OBS at the top. Click the eye to hide it, move it to the end of the list so it's behind every other source and click the lock button to remove the red rectangle around it whenever you have it selected. Now you can open Cam Twist. And in Cam Twist, you can select Siphon as your source and you can choose OBS as your uh, Siphon server. And there you go, you've got um, your OBS stream set up showing up in Cam Twist. Now what you can do with this is in Zoom or Hangouts or uh, Skype, 
um, you can select cam twist as your source. Now you can just ignore what I'm doing here. I was saying that what you're gonna wanna do is if you have your sound coming from a MIDI controller or something and you wanna stream it with your microphone, instead of just the built-in FaceTime cam or whatever, you can use some software like I show you audio and use your DAW to composite those things into a single stream and then capture that audio stream in OBS as I'm currently showing in the video. Um, but later I show that that's not the way to do it because Hangouts and Skype and Zoom all have their own audio input to begin with. So you can just ignore the, what I'm showing on the screen right now. Just don't, yeah, don't even like try to set the audio stream. You're just gonna want that to be muted. I'll show that in a little bit. Next thing you're gonna do is open up your video chat. I'm going to video chat with, uh, from my MatCat account to, um, I had Cordy app open on here. So I did a video chat with myself like that. Now in the Hangouts call, what you're gonna wanna do um, once it gets going, you're going to want to pick the uh, you're going to want to pick the camera feed in Hangouts to be Cam Twist. Right? Normally, it's on FaceTime or whatever. You're going to want to set it to Cam Twist. It's going to be one of those two choices. I don't know which one. That was the first one. Then once you've done that, um, I think over here I hold up the laptop to the camera. It's kind of hard to see. Um, this is where I talk about. Make sure you, this is where you pick the camera. Um, or this is where you pick the audio feed. Um, in the, uh, this is where you want to have it muted. Whatever audio your source, whatever audio source you got going on in OBS, you're going to want to mute that um, because Hangouts is going to use its own choice for which audio feed it uses. Same, uh, same for Zoom, same for Skype. Okay. Now we can see in uh, the laptop, it's kind of small on that screen, but you can see how I've got, um, I've got the stream that's going out of OBS showing up on the laptop in a uh, Hangouts window. And then here I tried to show what the latency is like. It's like five or ten millis, uh, five or ten seconds, because it takes OBS a while to turn it into a stream, and then it takes uh, a few seconds for it to go from Hangouts on one computer over the internet to Hangouts on another computer. Um, I think here is where I like tried to tried to show that stuff and show what it looks like. This was kind of confusing because I was like just trying to show what the latency was like and the camera wasn't focusing and whatnot, but it's all good. I got it working eventually. Um, you can kind of see it if you, you know, zoom in there and squint a little bit. It's kind of difficult to see. Uh, let's see, where does that actually happen? Let's see, yeah, that's the, I needed to put Cordy back up on top and then switch hands and like play a chord so you could see how long it uh, takes for it to actually show up on the laptop. You can see the latency right there, like, when I drag the window over, it's like a good five seconds or so. I play the chord there, and then, oh, there it shows up on the laptop, okay? But it was like the proof that it worked, so that was the main point of that thing right there. Um, so you need to be aware of the latency when you're dealing with this. Again, this is just a proof of technology, proof that you can do it, proof that if you have a, a, a DSLR camera that you've got set over your hands and a microphone and um, FaceTime cam, you can set up a studio where you can show Cordy, you can show your hands, you can show your face, and you can send all this nice audio and video streaming to your students over Skype, over Hangouts, um, over Zoom, um, all of these cool video services that you can use to keep teaching remote, remotely during these crazy times with coronavirus and whatnot. Um, so I just wanted to share this proof of concept with you. Um, it's totally up to you if you want to give it a shot um, the technology does work. I don't know what the latency is like. Um, I'm guessing that there's like a good five seconds, five seconds of latency. Um, one thing I didn't cover is how to show what your, uh, what the, um, other people, what you're seeing from your students. So that's something that I didn't have in here. I didn't flush that out too much because I was just trying to show how you can get your stuff, your camera feeds, your audio, your MIDI that you're playing onto your student's screen. That was the main purpose of this. Um, you can also use this to stream to YouTube or uh, Twitch or Facebook Live even. Um, I don't know if you can use it to stream to Inst Instagram Live, but yeah, this same technology can be used for that, the same uh, proof of concept and whatnot. So yeah, all right, with that said, I wanna thank everybody who has purchased Cordy in the last couple weeks. Um, I'm kind of blown away by the support. I really appreciate all of you. I am making amazing progress on the update. In the last video, I had said that if I could figure out how to speed up the fretboard thing such that I didn't need the database stuff, 
then that would be um, a big win for me and a big win for all the users and whatnot. And I made a huge uh, leap in that front. Um, still chipping away at it. The coronavirus thing has shut down our daycare. It has shut down our nanny. So I'm on dad duty uh, 8 a.m. till 5 p.m., 5.30 p.m., whenever my wife gets off of work. So that has cut into a huge amount of development time for me. Just, um, again, thank you for being patient. Everybody is uh, suffering because of this coronavirus in one way or the other. Um, but we're all doing the best we can with it. So I want to just thank you very much for checking out uh, Cordy, supporting it. Um, yeah, and I let me know in the comments if this... Um, if this approach with OBS and whatnot is helpful. I know that um, I demonstrated this on Mac, but OBS is available for Windows, and I know there are um, cam things you can get on Windows, and I th the original sources that I found for how to do this were all about how can you get OBS into Skype feeds on Windows. Um, so I know that this is possible on Windows. I don't have a Windows machine. I just use Windows in parallels if I ever need to do stuff with it. Um, it is possible. I'm not sure how to do it. I'm going to guess the process is going to be very similar. You're going to build your composite in OBS. You're going to find some way to send that out of OBS into cam some type of cam twist like software. You're going to use that cam twist like software as your video source in your video chat program of choice. And then that's what's going to show up on your student's mobile device or their computer or whatever. Okay, I have rambled long enough. I hope you're able to use this to uh, continue teaching and, um, yeah, keep your piano studios alive and your music studios alive and whatnot during these crazy times where everybody is uh, being asked to stay at home. All right, good luck. Deuces.